In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at what's new in the recent release Divi 4. And spoiler alert, I think Divi is now on the same level as Elementor. Elementor kind of leapfrogged Divi for a while, but I think Divi is right back in the game. And if you'd feel differently, let me know in the comments down below. But I definitely think they are very comparable. And I am even leaning towards Divi a little more these days because it's just nicer to work with and a nicer user interface. Either way, my name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any of my future videos. And we're getting started on this tutorial right now. Maybe you noticed, maybe you didn't, but Divi 4 has been released, and with it comes the theme builder. That's the biggest change from Divi 3 to Divi 4, and the theme builder allows you to customize templates for pages and headers and footers, which is new to Divi, but it's been in Elementor for a while. But Divi has definitely caught up and I think surpassed Elementor in a lot of ways. We'll talk about that at the end of this video. But the biggest change for Divi 4 is creating a header up here and then down at the bottom, footer area, and being able to customize those using the Divi page builder. In Divi 3, you had to use the themes customizer options to do that, even if you were using the Divi theme. So that's the scoop. You don't have to watch any further if that's all you want to know. What's new in Divi 4, that is what's new. The header and the footer builder and being able to make templates. If you want to see how to use those and create cool websites, keep on watching. So if we go into the dashboard and we go to Divi, we have a new option here called Theme Builder. This is where our templates exist. We have a global header installed. This is the default for the website, which means every single page on the site will have this global header and this global footer. And then we can customize specific places specifically using more options. So the posts here, for example, have the global header and global footer and a custom body in the middle. And that means we have the same header and footer as the default, just a different body section. We'll get into all this in just a minute. I'm just going to give you a quick overview. For the categories, we have the same setup, same global header, same global footer, but a different custom body area in the middle for category pages. We can customize 404 pages. We can customize products. You can easily add a new template by clicking the plus icon. And you can choose which pages this template is applied to or which pages it's excluded from. And this works for, as you can see, pages, posts, archive pages, WooCommerce pages, products, projects, 404s, search results, pretty much every single page you can create on your website, you can now create a Divi template for. And there's flyout menus as well, which if we had more pages on the site, you'd see more options in these pages. We have some categories, so you can apply different templates to specific categories. So here we have a template for all category pages, but you could have a different template for each of your category pages if you want to. And they can each have custom headers. Right now we have global headers on all of them, but we can create custom ones. I'll show you that in just a minute. So to edit any of these, we just click on the pencil beside their name, and we come into the very familiar Divi editor, and we have our header here. This is the header that's going to be on the top of whatever pages you define. And you can edit it using your familiar Divi tools. So nothing really new in, as far as the editing goes. And the footer, same kind of thing, the regular Divi editor. And this is a footer that's going to be throughout your site on whatever pages you define. Currently, this one is the global footer. If we wanted to not have a header or footer for on a particular page for whatever reason, we can click on this eyeball. Let's first go out to a post. I'll show you in more or a better example what this means. Let's go to a post. Here we have our custom post. There's our header. Here's the post content in the middle. And here's our footer at the bottom. So if we now don't want to have the header, we just hide the header. Click on Save Changes. Come back out here, refresh the page, and our header is gone. So you can easily mix and match header, body content, and footer depending on what you're trying to achieve. If we go into the body for the blog, we're able to pull in dynamic content. We can see out here we have our post name, a picture, our content right here, and that's all dynamically pulled in using the post title widget, oops, uh, right here, post title widget, and the featured image widget for the image, and the post content widget for the content. And this is a template now. This will be applied to all of your posts on your site. You no longer have to customize each post separately. With Divi, 
You may already be familiar with this functionality if you used Elementor Pro for a while, or ACF, or any other any number of other plugins that can do this. But now we can do it in Divi, which is pretty cool. And any change you make here will be applied to all your posts instantly, or at least whatever posts you have defined. Wait for it for this template to appear on. Click on the gear icon. You can choose which posts, all of them, or a subset. You can define exactly how everything looks. And this extends to products as well. I have WooCommerce installed, and I have one product in WooCommerce on here. And if we go up to, need our header back. Let's see, we have our header appearing again. You have to click on Save Changes before anything is applied. Click on Refresh, there's our header. Let's go to Product. And we have a great looking product page. Fully customized with the Divi template. And you can edit this under products right here. Header and footer are the same for as, as all the rest. And we have a custom body. We can click into there. And this is where we can custom build the information that goes into that product page using Divi. So that's awesome. Let's come back out of here. Let's, let's take this global header and delete it. I'm going to click on Add Custom Header. And right now, you can't add them from the Divi library. I assume you will be able to in the future, but right now, there are no custom headers or custom footers in the Divi library. I'll show you where you can download some off their blog. But right now, we have to build a custom one if we want to build our own. I'm going to build from scratch. I'm just going to have our menu appear. Just make it super simple, just so we can see there's a difference. Let's reduce some of this padding. Nice simple click and drag. And then click on the three dots at the bottom. Click on Save. Click on the X once it's saved. And now we have our custom header right here. Click on Save Changes to make sure we save those changes. And like it says here, custom header, that means this header is different than the global header. On your website, you can have one global header, and those are all in green, and one global footer. Those are all in green as well. And the custom header, you can have as many as you want of those. And this custom header is applied only to the products. So if we come back out here, we're on our products page. This is our global header right here. If we refresh this page, we now have our new header. That's how easy it is to replace headers on the site. And this is replaced now on every single product page, which you'll be familiar with because you know what templates are. Templates are just a page structure, and all the content is fit into that page structure no matter how many pages there are. We can also create custom category pages as we can see in this template right here. If we head out to the main site again and go to category, this is a category page. Looks very different than the default WordPress category pages. And the header is the global header. The content in the middle is the body content and the footer is the global footer, which you can see here. And you can change the category page content by just clicking on custom body, click on the pencil and you can change all the content within here. And this is dynamically pulled in. These are our blog posts. So when the blog post is added to this category, it's going to automatically be added to this section. And last but not least, 404 pages. Let's just go to a page that doesn't exist. And we have this 404, which can also be customized. Normally, they don't have headers and footers. So we're just going to hide the header, hide the footer, save changes. Come back out here, refresh the page, and here we have our 404 page. And this can have whatever content you want. Link back to the home page, have a search bar, have your most recent blog posts, whatever you want can be here. And this set of templates I downloaded from the Divi website. It's right here on the blog. Download the second free theme builder pack for Divi. This is the one I, I used for this tutorial. There are five other ones as of this recording. I have linked to all of them down below this video in the description. If you scroll down on this page, you will reach a button, actually an input field. I'll reach a button, this blue button right here. This will be an input field the first time you come here. You enter your email address, you subscribe, then the download button will appear. Click on download. Then you have the theme pack on your hard drive. You just unzip it, and then we have our theme pages. You can install individual pages or upload all of them, which is this one right here. This is the all option. To upload them, you go into your theme builder, click on the portability widget, click on import, click on no file selected, and then select your file. Choose all, open, choose which conditions you want to apply, then click on import. 
this option here where it says override the default website template, it will override that one template. So it will only override this one. Any other ones you have in here will still be there when you import the new ones. And they can be kind of difficult to identify, but you can also click into here and give these special names. Um, just call this custom for lack of a better term. But if you have many different types of templates, you could have template version one for last year's posts, template version two for this year's posts. So you can change these names and it can make sense of what you see. And in a nutshell, those are the biggest changes in Divi 4 and that's how you use them. I just paused this video and I opened up an Elementor built website and a Brizzy built website. And in Elementor, the theme builder, under templates theme builder, we have a list of custom templates I've created and it shows us where this appears. This one appears nowhere. This is for the entire site, entire site search results, posts. So it, it tells you a little bit where it is. It's not very detailed, but if you go into any one of these, let's go to website header, click on edit with Elementor, and then click on the up arrow, and then choose display conditions. This is where we choose our conditions in Elementor. We can choose to include and exclude, and we can choose these three options. Not a whole heck of a lot for this header. Compare that to Divi. For example, if we choose or go to the gear for products and we want this header, the specific header, to appear just on one product type. Let's choose specific products, just the nice hat, uncheck all products, click on save. And we don't have more than one product, so it only shows up for one. But it, it replaces our name for this template with the specific product's nice hat. So it tells you exactly where this template's applied, and it's at a glance. If you apply it to multiple, let's say we want it for that product and maybe this category, then it shows both of them in here. Click on Save Changes to save those changes. In Elementor, you have to go fishing around. You have to go into the Elementor Builder to see where that template's applied. And if you go over to the Theme Builder, you get a vague answer of where instances of this template are. So I think the way Divi lays it out is much cleaner than the way Elementor lays it out. And Brizzy is even less detail. It's also the newest page builder on the scene. But this is the templates for Brizzy under Brizzy and then templates. We have a footer and a header template, and that's all the information we have. We've set them to appear on the entire site. If we go to edit on any one of these, it's included on posts, all of them. So we have a condition set but that condition does not appear out here. We have to go into each individual one and see where it's displayed. And so I think those are two shortcomings now. They weren't shortcomings before until Divi developed this, this builder over here, but now there's shortcomings in the other page builders. So the Divi theme builder I think is more refined. It gives you a lot more targeting options and it's just much cleaner to work with and easier to work with. And there's also a lot of people who say the Elementor UI hasn't been updated in three years. And I don't think the Divi UI has been updated in three years either. Sure, they added this, but really in the Divi Builder, what has changed? Nothing, really, <laughs> in, in a long time, probably more than three years. I'm not a big fan of the Elementor user interface. I like the Divi one a little better. I like the inline editing. Divi and Brizzy both allow inline editing. But the argument that the Elementor UI hasn't been updated in too long, it kind of falls flat because Divi's UI hasn't been updated in at least that long. If you notice any other differences that I didn't point out here, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. So that's the end of our Divi 4 preview. If you like what you see, please leave a comment down below and let me know. If you don't like what you see, leave a comment too. And then check out this video up here, which is gonna be a complete walkthrough of Divi 4 and all the stuff that brings to the table. This is all the new stuff that you saw here, but just for anybody who's not familiar with Divi, this is gonna be a tutorial showing everything. It's not done yet, but maybe it is by the time you come and watch this video. And then check out this video down here, which helps you make your websites super fast, even if you use page builders. So check that out. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. And until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.